Hello everyone, it's Caroline and I'm back with another scrapbook process video. This one's for a layout called Evidence of a Good Weekend. So I start out these videos and frequently tell you I don't have any game plan and I do this time. This is a screenshot of the Silhouette software. You can load in your photos, size them the way you want to, um, and it gives you the ability to kind of move things around and figure out if it's going to work spatially. So I'm starting this out with, I don't have any texture paste, so I'm trying to MacGyver it. I've got my Nori paste. I've actually used this technique before and I've liked it, although I don't think it came out as good on this layout as it did in the past. This is a silhouette stencil material that I've cut with a hexagon pattern and I'm just painting on um, my Nori paste. I sprayed it with some Heidi Swap gold shimmer mist and sprinkled on some glitter to give it a little extra shine and I'm leveling it out with an old used gift card. So I put it on there and the effect is super subtle so I decide that I'm going to mask off the rest of the sheet with magazine pages and spritz it with some more of the Heidi Swap shimmer mist to give it some more color because boy it just it really just didn't show up all that well. And the funny thing is, is it really looks in the video and maybe it's just my monitor, but it really looks in the video like it's a super subtle effect. And it, it is a subtle effect, but it does show up a lot more on the final real life product than it does in the video. Um, so this is just painting on. So <laughs> I've got my paintbrush over there. I just picked it up at, you know, the local arts and crafts store. And uh, they're so long. So the first thing I did when I got home was cut the end of it off with a steak knife, literally a steak knife, and then sanded it down because I don't know, I don't, somebody needs to tell me why artists or paintbrushes are so long. Um, anyway, so that's my, my nubbed up little paintbrush. And one more time down here. The really neat thing about this stencil is it's self-adhesive and very low tack, but it really retains its tack. So when I'm finished with this, I actually just take the stencil in, run it under some hot water and rub the color off and just leave it to dry. And when I'm finished, I put it back on the same um, backing that it was on when I started. This is actually the second or third time that I've used this stencil. So it's, it's kind of neat that they're reusable, especially if you do something generic like this. I've used it for um, a title. <laughs> Titles are kind of one off, so you're not going to reuse that again. Although if anyone wants the word beast that they can stencil, you let me know. I'll share. This took forever and a day to dry, so um, we're gonna we're gonna watch me dry for a little bit. If you are finding me because of finding me because of the paper clipping roundtable podcast, I just wanted to say welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I hope you like what you see. I hope you subscribe. I hope you come back. Um, such a fun experience to be on the podcast. That was my third time. My second time with Phil the Furstenberg, which I just think is so funny. She's so famous. You, 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 the day before you get the list of who you're going to be on with, and I'm just like, really, I have to be on with Vilna again. She's so famous. Um, but she's so nice and so gracious and really funny. And of course she has that gorgeous accent, which is just fun to listen to. And she's such a good sport. I actually told two stories about her influence, which is funny because when you look at my pages, there's, there's nothing Vilna that shows up. Um, and yet she has, um, she has managed to influence me. I have managed to curse Vilna. That was in one of the stories that I told on the round table. Um, a lot of fun. So, I've got my title and I showed you in that screenshot what it said and I'm pulling it up and I'm not having great success. So this E right here ends up getting mangled and I try in vain to fix it and it just doesn't really work. <clears throat> and ultimately when I started thinking about how skinny these letters were and how terrible I have, you know, I just have a terrible time lining up letters anyway when I go to adhere them down. So I thought about it and I thought, well, it's all mangled, so I'm going to go cut it again in cursive. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, so I go over and I write it up in cursive so that it's all connected. This is um, SNF Lolly Hop. And I'm not saying that wrong. It's lolly hop, like lollipop, but hop. Um, and I really, really, really love this font, but this E gets mangled 
and I try really hard to fix it and it just doesn't work. Um, a, you know, paper is very fibrous and some papers have more chunks of fiber than others. And every once in a while, the silhouette will be cutting along and it just hits one of those fibrous pieces and it doesn't cut through. So I try really hard to fix this and um, I don't quite get it there. And I set it down and I go back and I think, all right, I'm going to I'm going to try it again and I'm going to change my cut settings because apparently this gray paper that I'm using is pretty fibrous. So I'm going to ratchet my blade, I'm going to cut it slower, and I'm going to um, double cut it. Yeah, except for my silhouette died and I never managed to get it cut again. So I've actually, I stopped and what you're seeing now is just where I started picking up these papers was actually a couple of days later because I I had to walk away. I was really frustrated and frankly very not happy at the idea that my silhouette has bit the dust. So I don't necessarily know what I'm going to do about that. Um, I'll try to call customer service tomorrow and see if they don't have a great answer, but I'm just not holding out a whole lot of hope. Although they'll probably say, are yours? <laughs> like every time I call them, they go, they say something simple like, are you telling it that you're using uh, the cutting material, like the mat? And I'm like, ah, that's what it is. So that's not going to be what the case is this time, but it's always something super silly and I feel foolish for having called them, but they miraculously make the machine behave. So when I had this all set out, I didn't really have any, so I had my title and I had my picture and I had the way the pictures were going to be kind of circling the, the photo, but I didn't even have that sense that it was circling the photo. I just had them kind of arranged around the photo and it's going in kind of counterclockwise order. So that picture that I'm working with right there is the first picture of the weekend. It's my son playing football on Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, after the game was done, we went to the Grape Jamboree. Um, this is in Geneva, Ohio, where they have lots of grapes in several wineries and they have the Grape Jamboree, which is a parade, and they have a, <clears throat> a Miss Grape Jamboree. Um, and then, of course, they have, you know, there's wine tasting and grapes for sale. And then, of course, all the street fair stuff, um, food and rides and face painting and all of that stuff. So we had ourselves some Bloomin' Onions, and Carrie had some grape ice cream, which I frankly thought sounded disgusting, but he gave me a taste, and it was really, really tasty. So that was interesting. And then after that, so that was Saturday, and then on Sunday we went through, or we went to one of our local parks and took a walk and took a, just a couple of pictures. I collected acorns at the park because I might do some acorn kind of craft, and I've learn the hard way that when you come home with your acorns, you have to bake them to kill all the critters and such. Um, and then I learned the hard way that we do not like the smell of baking acorns. So just in case you've never baked your acorns, they don't smell good. So at any rate, I, when I had this laid out, I didn't have, like it just kind of occurred to me that it seemed very circular. And I usually go through and double or triple map my photos and I thought, well, maybe instead of double matting photos on just, you know, square pieces of paper, what if I did them all in uh, circle punches? So that's where the general idea came from. This is a Tim Holtz dry emboss folder that I just used with that yellow piece of cardstock. Um, I've never used it before. I don't know when I bought it, but it was one of those, like, I don't, I didn't know how to use it. Boy, I really like that with the circle. It, it uh, looks like a shattered window. It's very cool. I will be using that again soon. So the pieces of paper that I picked out, um, there's not a whole lot of cohesiveness to these pictures. In general, they were taken in the span of a weekend, but there's three different events that are going on. Um, there's no clear color scheme that kind of jumps out at you. So I kind of took my lead from the individual photos and went through and just found things that were kind of fall-ish feeling, but not super fall feeling. This is me staring and trying to figure out what I can do to fix this because it doesn't seem right. And I decide that the the big picture of Kerrig and I needs to have a bigger, bigger circle. So 
that scrap isn't going to work because it's just not big enough. Um, if you're not familiar, these are Creative Memories cutting templates. I don't think they're available any longer, which is, maybe they are. Well, I don't know. I guess Creative Memories is having their issues. Um, it's a really great tool. That basic gray paper will not get used for that because I love that paper and I know that it's going to be mostly covered up on this final product and I'm not going to use my favorite paper just to cover it all up. So I think this is Echo Park paper and I like it but it's not hoard worthy so and I decided to scrap the blue circle and now I'm just going to go through and kind of rearrange things to get a feel for it. See if this bigger piece of paper doesn't help. The smaller ones were fine, except for uh, like it wasn't guiding the circles around it. So it ended up being kind of lumpy. Whereas I think this helps me kind of arrange the pictures in a more circular format, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> this page ends up being not very heavily embellished because there's so much color and pattern and texture that it doesn't end up needing it and it's kind of funny because when you look at the final product um you don't i don't see anything really specific so tracy banks was the first person i saw do that where before she gets to the glue down stage she takes a real quick shot with her phone to help her remember where things go and i just i thought that was genius um i'm foam taping the picture of Ted playing football because ultimately to me that's one of the most important pictures. Um, I really do need to make a whole layout um, of him playing football for this season. I don't scrap every single game just because that's all my my album would be. So I, I usually only make a couple of pages. Also he's quarterback so I have nine million pictures of him getting ready to throw the ball and it gets to be a little bit boring. Also, they lost this weekend, so I don't, I don't want to make a big deal out of that because they, they've really only lost one or two games. I think they've only lost one game this season, and I don't want that to be the one that I end up scrapbooking. That's not nice. So we'll wait until there's, I've got good pictures to use from Win. So, although I don't know if that's going to happen because the same weekend that my silhouette took a dump, my SLR decided that it was going to have issues as well because the universe is apparently not happy with me. So maybe one day I'll pick it up and it'll just miraculously solve itself. Um, Carrick and I have been dating forever and I have maybe five good pictures of the two of us. So I really love this picture of us at the football game. It's probably one of the best pictures that I have. Of course, it's no coincidence that we're both wearing sunglasses. He looks fine with no glasses. I have decided that, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm so tired lately. Sunglasses are just a nice, a nice lifesaver. So as long as I'm giving credit for um, things that I've discovered on YouTube, um, I've had this score tape forever. I bought it after I took an online cards classes class. It's awkward to say, but I never used it. And then I was watching videos by Haley Stewart and she uses, I don't know if it's the same brand or not, but she uses this. And I thought, I really need to try that. And I'm very comfortable using this tape. Like I'm, I'm pleased that I, you know, got the kick in the pants to pull it out and actually use it because I think this has become my favorite adhesive at this point. Um, also, she uses this little jar to put her scraps in and I thought that's genius because it's um, otherwise the scraps would just kind of sit on the table and drive me crazy or I would, you know, I usually have a trash can under the table and half of it ends up on the floor. It just takes longer to throw away on the floor than it does up on the table. So I do like that. So all right, at this point, I'm trying to figure out, well, what do I need to do? There's already an explosion of color. There's all kinds of texture and pattern. How much stuff do I need to put on here? So I've got some paper flowers. These are felt flowers from American Crafts. I wish they would make more of those. They need to make felt snowflakes. They just need to bring the felt back because I think it's lovely. And if I like it, damn it, it should exist in the marketplace for me. So I'm going through my little Pyrex dish of silhouette cuts. And then these are Simple Stories bingo cards. 
from a six by six paper pad. I just cut them up and binder clip them and stick them in there because it's so nice just to be able to trim off a word and tuck it in behind. <laughs> it's supposed to be an easy process, but apparently I put my adhesive too far up on the top of that picture and couldn't slide it in easily. But, you know, <clears throat> these little words just lend themselves so nicely for just adding a little bit of, you know, extra oomph to a page. Uh, that circle that says the story will end up in the final product, but not there. And that little red thing that I just put in says action pack. That's a silhouette print and cut. I love my silhouette, loved my silhouette, and I try to use as many aspects of it as I can. Um, so I ditching the word weekend. I need my reading glasses. I'm ditching the word weekend because of the, the way the E was mangled and I'm using letter stickers instead. I'm using the washi tape to help line up the words or the letters because I have a terrible time putting them on straight and then it drives me crazy forever. And this is a nice, easy way to do it. You do have to be sort of careful because it can, um, pull up the paper. So like before I put the washi tape on, um, I put it on my pants a couple of times to kind of weaken the tack on it so that it wouldn't make um, a mess and it was still kind of grabby but all right so this these are frustration hands ah uh, because I had everything sized nicely and then when I changed the letter stickers the word good didn't fit where I had it so I end up going hmm I can put it off to the side like this and that might work. Um, now I have to see if the word evidence is going to fit up here and it does. So these are happy hands. Oh, hey, I even clap. <laughs> so um, I don't know what I was pointing at, but I was pleased. So I went and grabbed my spray adhesive and my box that I spray these in and sprayed the word evidence. And here's a little tidbit for you. Every letter in the word evidence can be sprayed on the front side or the back side, and you can still make it work. So um, <sighs> I, I put the, the, the letters in the box upside down so I could spray the back side, and as soon as I hit the trigger on the can, it just blew them, and half of them flipped over and ended up with adhesive on the wrong side, and I sort of panicked and then went, I can still make this work. You can't do that with a G, but you can do it with all the letters in the word evidence. Um, Studio Calico letters, just to add in of a good weekend. So the title came from, I had all these pictures on my phone and I go to work very early in the morning and we'll sit there in the car waiting to go in because the doors are locked and um, hit the Facebook app on my phone and it took me into camera roll and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit, but I've never actually done anything with the camera roll and Facebook. And then I realized, oh, duh, you can go through and check different pictures and it will load them into an album. So um, I checked a bunch of pictures and it asked me to name the album. And I had the night before said, you know, made a post about what a great weekend I'd had. And uh, I thought, well, this is the evidence that I had a great weekend. So I named the album Evidence of a Good Weekend. And when I printed out the photos, I thought, well, I've already got a title. I can, I can go ahead and just use this. Uh, evidence of a Good Weekend seemed like a good idea. In the beginning of the layout, I had um, some file folders that I was going to use. I ended up ditching the idea. It just didn't work. But I had cut cut file folders because I thought you know what what item goes with the word evidence well I thought of you know of a, of a manila folder marked evidence and I was gonna put the pictures on top of it but the page is really crowded to start with so I do not own a whole lot of paper flowers my daughter asked to go to Tuesday morning and I had never been and they had some prima flowers at a really good deal. So now I own some paper flowers. I had some hero arts, but that's some off white ones that I can spray mist. But those are the only other flowers that I own that are paper. So I've not in general been a big flowery person. I still am not a big flowery person, but it's kind of nice to have some. had those freckle fawn 
flare for a year. So I'm happy to finally use one of those. And I grab one of those tags and I hand journal and I hate it. So I drop back in computer journal. I just really do not like my handwriting on a scrapbook page. And I'm okay with you using your handwriting on a scrapbook page, but every time I do it, I just get instantly uncomfortable and regret it. So on this one, it was nice and easy to um, just flip the tag over and print on the other side. So I'm using some red and white twine on this. This process probably would have been a lot easier had I done it before I adhered the, the tag down. Sometimes I don't think things through all the way. And then this last bit, I try and I try and I try to get frustrated and I just, oh, look it. Yeah, so, but that part gets cut out, so, or cut off. Uh, apparently I should not do these things with a camera running because, you know, you see stuff as it turns out. And I've got to set up the date stamp so it was December, or excuse me, September 27th and 28th. And I have just a heck of a time using these things. So I always have to do a couple of tests um, a couple of test stamps because I'm terrible with it. I do upside down. I get the date wrong. Um, so there we go. And I still kind of smudged it, but that's okay. So this ends up being the final product. Now in this shot, it looks a little dirty up in the upper left hand corner. It's just the way the cardstock is warped. I actually, it looks decent and I like the effect of it all. So that Tim Holtz, Dry emboss, I really like that. I really like my felt flowers. I like seven pictures on this layout on an eight and a half by 11 page. That's not bad. So I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Go ahead and thumbs up, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And I really appreciate you taking the time to visit and watch. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.